Hi, this is Mr. Broadwater, and I'm here at Coloma Elementary, and I'm here to read The One and Only Ivan. We're going to start on page 161, and we're going to stop when we get to 179 today. So, a bad dream. I lay awake, peeling dried red paint off my fingertips. Bob, who accidentally walked on one of my paintings, is licking his red paws. Every so often, I glance over at the empty ring, the claw stick glint in the moonlight. Stop! No! Ruby frantically cries, startles me. Ruby, I call. You're having a bad dream. You're okay. You're safe. Where's Stella? She asks, gulping air. Before I can answer, she says, never mind. I remember now. Go back to sleep, Ruby, I say. You've had a hard day. I can't go back to sleep, she says. I'm afraid I'll have the same dream. There was a sharp stick, and it hurt. I look at Bob, and he looks back at me. Oh, Ruby says. Oh, Mac. She puts her trunk between the bars. Do you think, she hesitates, do you think Mac is mad because I hurt him today? I considered lying, but gorillas are terrible liars. Probably, I finally said. He ran away after that, Ruby says. Bob gives a scornful laugh. Crawled away is more like it. We are quiet for a while. Branches claw at the roofs. A light rain drums. One of the parrots murmur. Something is in her sleep. Ruby breaks the silence. Ivan, I smell something funny. He can't help it, Bob says. I believe she's referring to the finger paints Julia gave me, I said. What are finger paints, Ruby asks. You make pictures with them, I explain. Could you make a picture for me? Maybe someday. I remember Julia's picture, the one that will be worth a million dollars. I hold it up to the glass. Look, it's for you. Julia made it. It's hard to see, Ruby says. There's not much moonlight. Why do I have two trunks? I examine the picture. Those are feet. Why do I have two feet? That's called artistic license, says Bob. Ruby sighs. Could you tell me another story, she asks. I don't think I can ever go back to sleep. I told you all I remember, I say, with a helpless shrug. Then, tell me a new story, she says. Make something up. I try to think, but my thoughts keep returning to Mac and his claw stick. Anything yet, Ruby asks. I'm working on it. Ivan, Ruby presses. Bob said you are going to save me. I, I search for true words. I'm working on that too. Ivan, Ruby says in a voice so low I can barely hear her. I have another question. I can tell from the sounds of her voice that this will be a question I don't want to answer. Ruby taps her trunk against the rusty iron bars of her door. Do you think, she asks, that I'll die in this domain someday like Aunt Stella? Once again, I consider lying, but when I look at Ruby, the half-formed words die in my throat. Not if I can help it, I say instead. I feel something tighten in my chest, something dark and hot, and it's not a domain, I add. I pause, and then I say, it's a cage. The story. I like... I look at the ring layered with fresh sawdust. I look at the skylight of the half-hidden moon. I just thought of a story, I say. If it, is it a made-up story or a true one, Ruby asks. True, I say, I hope. Ruby leans against the bars. Her eyes hold the pale moon in them, the way it still ponds holds stars. Once upon a time, I say, there was a baby elephant. She was smart and brave, and she needed to go to a place called a zoo. What's a zoo, Ruby asked. A zoo, Ruby, is a place where humans make 
amends. A good zoo is a place where humans care for animals and keep them safe. Did the baby elephant get to the zoo? Ruby asked softly. I don't answer right away. Yes, I say at last. How did she get there? Ruby asks. She had a friend, I say, a friend who made a promise. How? I take a long time, but finally Ruby returns to sleep. Ivan, Bob whispers, yawning, what you say about the zoo, how are you going to do it? Suddenly I feel as if I could sleep for a thousand days. I don't know, I admit. You'll think of something, Bob says confidently, his voice trailing off as his eyes close. What if I don't? I ask, but Bob is already asleep. His little red feet dance, and I know he's running in his dreams. Remembering, Bob and Ruby sleep on. I don't sleep. I think about the promise I made to Stella and the pictures I've made for Ruby, and I remember, I remember it all. What they did. We were clinging to our mother, my sister, and I when the humans killed her. They shot my father next. Then they chopped off their hands, their feet, their heads. Something else to buy. There is a cluttered, musty store near my cage. They sell an ashtray there. It is made from the hand of a gorilla. Another Ivan. When morning comes and the parking lot glimmers with dew, I see the billboard on the highway. There I am, the one and only Ivan, bathed in the pink light of dawn. I look so angry with my furrowed brow and clenched fist. I look the way my father did the day the men came. I am supposed to be supposed a peaceful sort. Mostly, I watch the world go by and think about naps and bananas and yogurt raisins, but inside my hind, inside me, hidden, is another Ivan. He could tear a grown man's limbs off his body. In the flicker of a time, it takes a snake's tongue to taste the air. He could taste revenge. He is the Ivan on the billboard. I stare at the one and only Ivan at the faded picture of Stella. I remember George and Mac and their ladders, adding the picture of Ruby to the bring the new visitors to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. I remember the story, story Ruby told, the one where the villagers came to rescue her. I hear Stella's kind, wise voice. Humans can surprise you sometimes. I look at my fingers coated in red paint, the color of blood, and I know how to keep my promise. Days. During the days, I wait. During the nights, I paint. I worry when Mac takes Ruby into the rain. He carries the claw stick with him all the time now. He doesn't use it. He doesn't have to. Ruby isn't fighting back anymore. She does whatever Mac asks nights. I close my eyes. I dip my finger into the paint. When I'm done with one piece of paper, I set it aside to dry. It's so small, just one sheet, and I'm going to need so many. I move on to the next, and the next, and the next. It's a giant puzzle, and I'm making the pieces one by one. My, by morning, my floor is covered with paintings. I hide the paintings under my pool of dirty water before Mac can see them. I don't want them to end up in the gift store selling for $20 a piece, 25 with a frame. These paintings are for Ruby, every one of them. Project. Ivan, Ruby asks one morning when I am trying to nap, why are you always so sleepy during the day? I've been working on a project at night, I tell her. What's a project? It's a thing, a painting. It's a painting for you, actually, I answer. 
Ruby looks pleased. Can I see it? Not yet. Ruby pokes with annoyance at her roped feet. She takes a breath. Ivan, I do have to do the shows with Mac today. I'm afraid so. I'm sorry, Ruby. Ruby dips her trunks in her water bucket. That's okay, she says. I already knew the answer. Not right. It's night again, and everyone's asleep. I look at the pictures. I've just made one of dozens. It's smudged and torn, a muddy blur. I place it beside the others lining my floor. The colors are wrong. The shapes are off. I look like it looks like nothing. It's not what I'm trying to create. It's not what it's meant to be. It's not right, and I don't know why. Across the parking lot, the billboard beckons, as it always does. Come to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. If I could use human words to say what I need to say, this would all be so easy. Instead, I have my pots of paint and my ragged pages. I sigh. My fingertips glow like jungle flowers. I try again.